education. My father was the head of education, PhD, all that stuff. I go home and ask him, said, why don't we learn about money in school? And he looked at me and says, because the government doesn't let us teach that subject. The government tells us what we can teach and what we can't teach. And I thought that was strange. And I said, but aren't we going to school to learn about money? He says, no, your job is to get a job. I said, but you get a job to earn money. He goes, no, you're supposed to just get a job. I went, no, 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 no. Isn't the purpose of a job to earn money? He goes, you're correct. I said, so why don't I just learn about money? I can skip the job part, you know? And he got flustered and he said, look, and my father was for Japanese, very tall, six foot four, and an imposing man, good guy. But he says, if you want to learn about money, why don't you ask your best friend's father about money? And I said, why? That's Mike. So I ask him. He says, because Mike's father is an entrepreneur. And I said, what, am, what are you? He says, I'm an employee. I'm a government employee. And I went, oh, what's the difference? He says, the difference is an entrepreneur must know about money. Or they're, they're no longer entrepreneurs. And he says, an employee doesn't have to know anything about money. Because the government will take care of them, the company will take care of them. So I'm kid, I'm all confused. But I took my dad's advice and I trundled over to Mike's father's office and knocked on his door and I said, hey, I'm here, nine years old, teach me about money. He says, beat it, kid, you know. But that's where the story of Rich Dad, Poor Dad started. And finally, through persistence, my rich dad started teaching me about money on one condition. And that condition was he would never pay me. He says, the moment I pay you, you think like an employee. He says, that's the trap. Entrepreneurs work for free. And now I'm nine years old, my head's going cracking in half. He says, you never want a paycheck. You understand that, kid? I said, okay, I got it. And he says, well, how do I make money? He says, that's what entrepreneurs figure out. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's the, it's the cat, you know, which just comes first, a cat or the, you know, the, the cat chasing its tail. And I said, so how do I learn about money? So he would just break out a Monopoly game board. So I would work for free. I'd pick up cigarette butts and he had hotels and restaurants and I would clean and do menial tasks. And as I got older, I started getting into office work and marketing and accounting. And I was an apprentice basically, but I always worked for free. And he would teach me about money. But the way he taught me about money was playing Monopoly. And I finally one day I got upset. I said, well, when are you gonna teach me about money? He says, what do you think we're doing? We're playing Monopoly. He goes, no, 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 no. What do you think we're doing? We're playing Monopoly. He says, what do you think we're doing? So I don't know. I'm teaching about money. And then that's why, you know, you have one green house. You know, he says, there's many formulas for great success in money. There's thousands of them. But one of the best ones is found on the game of Monopoly. It still is today. Four green houses, one red hotel. Mm -hmm. I said, what? He says, one of the greatest ways to acquire great wealth is playing Monopoly in real life. Four greenhouses, one red hotel. But is that all there is? He goes, that's it. And he says, what do you think I'm doing? And I went, I don't know. So then he took me out and he showed me his greenhouses. And 10 years later, when I was 19, I was now in school in New York, and I come back to Hawaii and Rich Dad had bought the biggest piece of land smack dab in the middle of Waikiki Beach. And when you go to Waikiki Beach today, you'll see the Hyatt Regency Hotel. That was his hotel. Just like the game of Monopoly. Just like the game of Monopoly. Acquired assets and they became bigger assets. He just kept a, 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 it was called an assemblage because that property wasn't that big at the time. So he had to buy out all the small guys because Waikiki was a little dirt and water little town. So he'd buy out this shop owner and buy that shop owner. And it took him a while, but he finally assembled this large piece of property. And then he, then he and Hyatt put up this giant hotel. Mm. You know, it I, just, and it just sold for $800 million. So that's how I learned about money. And that's because he refused, he refused to accept a paycheck. He says that the moment you accept a paycheck, your brain goes dead. You know, he just bought, he just, he just got paid. 
He says, as long as you're hungry, you'll think. And he was a great, great teacher. So today when people ask me what I do, they know me as the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I just say I play Monopoly. So I own greenhouses, I own big hotels, I own oil wells, golf courses, businesses. I'm just playing Monopoly. That's mm. all I do. You know, I re-listened to your book on the flight over from London, and I hadn't listened to it in maybe six years. And the first time I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I thought it was a book about money. But when I, when I listened to it a couple days ago, I saw it differently. I saw it as a book about fear, about self-knowledge, about mindset. Because you're yeah. just describing these people and they're, they're in this world that they don't want to, want to acknowledge that they're in. It's almost yeah. a prison in their own mind. Right. Is that what you were trying to get across when you wrote that book? Well, I don't know what I was trying to get across. I just, uh, the real, the, the fact of the matter was I created this board game called Cash Flow. Yeah. And I couldn't sell the board game. So I had to write a brochure. The brochure I wrote was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So Cash Flow came out in 1996. And Money, I mean, Rich Dad, Poor Dad came out in 97. So the real fact of the matter is Cash Flow is about accounting. Rich Dad, Poor Dad is a book on accounting, income statement, balance sheet, statement of cash flow. But if you've ever taken accounting courses, there is no more course more boring than accounting. So to have Rich Dad, Poor Dad be a book on accounting and be the number one personal finance book of all times, that says something. And it, it sold the cash flow game. And today there's thousands of cash flow clubs all over the world. And the mission statement was people teaching people. You can bypass that school system because the school system will never teach you about money. The school system was designed to teach you to be an employee, which is important, or a doctor or a lawyer, a specialist, but never about money. So once I got old enough and I had already retired and I was rich and I was fairly well off, it was kind of a social conscience. I said, I have to share what I know. So that's why and it took till 1996 for the cash flow board game to come out because I could see this crash coming, which came out in 1998. And then Rich Dad Poor Dad came in 97. And um, the story goes, every publisher turned me down. They said, you don't know what you're talking about. Because they said, savers were losers. Your house is not an asset and the rich don't work for money. And so the publishers are like my dad, academic superstars, you know, they're A students in school. And um, so they turned the book down. And it took going by self-published route. You know, a lot of network marketing companies picked up the book, like Amway and those guys. And they picked up the book to help recruit because it's about financial independence. They're about the same thing I am. And then Oprah called in 2000. And then the next day I'm on Oprah and, and I went from obscurity to world famous in overnight success in 2000. And the book has been on the New York Times bestsellers for seven years until the New York Times took it off. They said it had been on too long. But as you know, I mean, most people in publishing or journalism, they're on the other side of the coin of capitalism. You know? So they don't like guys who make money. And that's like my poor dad side. So that's kind of the story. And, you know, I play, I play a Monopoly in real life. Uh, I don't need a job. I don't have a retirement. Don't need a retirement. I don't want the government to take care of me. But I felt a social responsibility to teach. And that's what my rich dad did for me. And you said the book is about accounting, and it is an amazing book on accounting because it makes it understandable. Yeah. I took accounting yeah. in business school, and I know what you mean. It's boring. It's boring. Yeah. But it is also a book about your own fears, and I think that's why it resonates with people. Because right. you're right. telling them things they know is true. They know when they look in the mirror, they're not making the correct choices. They're not being disciplined. They're doing the wrong thing. And they know they're unhappy in, in fear their whole lives, yeah. waiting for the next paycheck. And it's understandable. you know. I. We all have fear. You know, to be truthful, we all have fear. It's just how you deal with it. And, um, <clears throat> you know, Einstein said, you know, imagination is more important than knowledge, but knowledge empowers imagination. And what most people lack is real business knowledge, like accounting, you know, like debt, like taxes. 
You gotta know that stuff, but they don't teach it in school to anybody. So, and, and then when people ask me, how did your rich dad learn this when your poor dad, a PhD, did it? And the answer is very simply, my rich dad, who's my, my best friend's father, his father died when he was 13. So his so rich dad had this family business at 13 to run. So he had to drop out of school, which was his blessing. You know, there's blessings and, you know, sometimes the blessing doesn't look like a blessing, but it turned out to be a blessing. And then his teachers became his bookkeeper, his accountant, his attorney, his banker, his real estate agents. So he has what I call real teachers, not these fake teachers in school. You see, most teachers in school, they're out of ethics. They teach subjects they, don't, they themselves don't practice. You know, I had the same problem in my MBA program. I got into arguments with the marketing teacher because the guy didn't have a business. And then I got into arguments with the uh, accounting teacher because the accounting teacher didn't know accounting. I knew more about accounting than him because I actually worked in bookkeeping in my rich dad's companies. And so I'm not an accountant, but I understand accounting. So that was the end of my school year.